Potter's Journal, <laughs> May 20, 20, what is going on in the studio today? Well, this time of year, Potters seem to turn away from the pottery and back to the garden. So we're going to do that too and make some garden pillars, some garden art with the turtles making their way out to the sea, the fish, okay, in that school, and simple garden pottery for a gazing globe. Okay, let's see what's going on in the studio today and in the garden. Here we've got the variegated Solomon seal, a native here in western PA, with the flowers. Well, they're just finishing up but it gives a splash like you might see with a wave at the beach okay and appropriate and fits here in with the turtles okay okay so too stiff to wet uh, to work this is a piece of what I guess in the 80s the old master uh, my mentor good friend Jerry Kaplan who I worked with doing this for about 10 years called Flannelette, and I guess it you need it uh, holds a lot of water, and you need to absorb it till it comes to the drip point. So get everything out to the drip point. And I don't know if there is such a thing anymore called flannelette. Uh, maybe um, a potter, somebody like Broken Arrow Pottery, who also knows about fabric, would know if there's such a thing still called flannelette or what it was. Um, it needs to be heavy in order to hold the water and not have it drip right out the bottom. And then the pipe very stiff after it's been extruded needs to be softened up by wrapping it with fabric and letting it absorb into the pipe and it sometimes takes several wrappings and a couple days to fully saturate in um, but not to the collapse point and okay so the pieces out in the field were head high they had to be made at the plant where it was extruded and fired in the big kilns um, my old kiln yeah I had 26 27 inches the kiln I have now I have only got 19 inches so that would mean I could make a 19 inch piece or a little 8 or 9 inch piece. I finally decided that I could make two 19 inch pieces by making some of them ex uh, come down further <coughs> and some of them go up higher. So with the stencil Okay, I've got them color-coded so that the green ones are up to 19 inches and the red ones come down to 19 inches. Um, I actually did adjust that a little bit because I thought um, it still needed more stability, so I, I did a short one and a tall one. And this was, okay, so this one was, yeah, up in here and cut out okay like that um, and that's why yeah the red the color coding and I also <laughs> it's been a while since I did this um, so I, I the first time I would do this I would mark the stencil with something rough and round like the back of a pen but if you have too many cuts and it's too weak in one place it can break so after that I would come through and okay here this guy doesn't seem to reach over to here and we've got a weak spot that comes way down so I would then come through and let's see how will we do this maybe we can put this guy's foot coming out like that and hitting him at the top of the head and you know 
and then stretch this guy's head a little bit down to touch the top of his. And then put his, okay, one leg up here, and we may make him a little shorter than the others, and stretch his body, actually stretch his body out that way, and put, okay, a leg back here, and I think this one will still fit here. So, I'm going to do maybe a couple series of videos here. We'll do the fish and the rose pattern, and maybe in each one. And then um, I will hit a different um, part of the process. So we won't look at the um, starting of it next time. And okay, this guy, I'm only cutting the open spaces and down below leaving some solid pipes. So um, and he has a good base. So I think we can shift him over just a bit. And, and he can still, okay, reach up to that guy, down to here. So I first work out a stencil. I make some changes when I put the stencil into the pipe, thinking for design and stability and then I will come back and do that again. But, um, yeah, these can be done, you know, with a cylinder as a um, lantern for a tabletop. Okay, and I use a very simple tool, <laughs> practically the only one, Potter's Fettling Knife. I don't think they've changed the design with this in a million years. and I try to make clean cuts so there's not a lot to clean up inside here and being careful too not to rip the clay okay so this is his head and then at the corners I compact it in a little bit so that it's easy to remove so that it doesn't tear up the parts that you're leaving behind that's especially important in the um, open spots lower down in the pipe and if you want a large piece of garden pottery that's head high with that rolling pin and um, don't own a slab roller, just roll a slab out of clay you can make small little cylinders and just stack them up on some uh, on maybe a pipe actually um, <laughs> this week, okay this week was a busy week on YouTube um, Eddie Goller who has visited my studio and purchased and took home one of uh, my turtle pillars. Um, he is always engineering something of use for the potter. Um, a sieve, bats. Well, he designed a base for this. Um, his, so that he could put it out in the garden. And, um, you know, he used a short tube that came up in that and then some shims. But if you used a long, tall tube, um, you could then stack up if you threw on the wheel or made with slabs short little sections and you could just stack them up and make a tall piece of garden pottery um, okay yeah keep in mind Chihuly's pieces with that idea that uh, they you know individual glass pieces assembled that there really is a lot you can do um, by assembling small thrown or hand built pieces of clay to make large pieces of garden art. Okay, and these will all go in the scrap bucket. Okay, and this is blank clay, so I'm not going to cut anything out there, but there is a space between him and the next turtle here. Um, okay, if you do check out Eddie's video, 
<laughs> make sure you catch all the way to the end. He did the installation of my piece. Um, I basically see my pieces on a pedestal in a show or on a shelf at my nursery. I don't see them installed in the garden. Um, when I do see them installed in my own garden, it's basically just to stand them up. But he had he had, um, placed it in his garden on a bed of washed river gravel and with the hostas that made a much more dramatic effect than mine out there as waves. So it really did look like his turtles were either making their way out to the sea or just the baby ones just um, coming out of okay the eggs okay so after I do each turtle I come back and clean up all the edges in there um, there's still another part of this process but um, this is just so there is nothing rough so if you put your hands in there um, and I'll do it with the knife Settling knife. I will also um, you know take my finger and go through there. Um, the outside part yet there's still two more parts. Um, one is adding the color and the next is carving and drawing on the outside. But before I do the underglazes or we'll say slips because uh, they're not going to be under a glaze. I do um, smooth this out. So this is the piece that came off of the first piece. These um, were all carved out. I haven't done any this small before. Uh, but actually, yeah, what is that? This actually could be thrown on the wheel. Okay, so this is dried up again. And you know what? I hope I didn't leave it dry up too much. Um, just apply the color. And I don't mind the drips. But, um, however, I may clean these up. They may be too drippy today. Because um, I thinned this down so that I would have enough to do this. I'm going to have to maybe place an order and get some more. But, um, I think I'm only going to do a little bit of this and turn back to the pottery again. I, I um, did this through the um, 80s and the 90s. The old master, let's see, when did he die? Sometime around 2002 or 3. Um, and that's when I started doing the workshop with presenting it with another artist. Okay, so hopefully when I get around to the other side, the first one will be dried enough so that we can do the carve through process. This was a big week on YouTube. Um, if you've read the col comments here and on some other channels, you'd often see the theme the Ferrar go down there with some uh, very nice and thoughtful comments with um, okay, somebody who seemed to be both learning the craft but had a good sensitivity to it and at some point it really got my imagination sparked as to when I would hear going out to my potter's shed well what is that potter's shed is it only big enough and it fits the wheel and you work outside in the yard or is it some massive thing with brand new equipment um, everything sparkling and white so I gave a couple little nudges when are we gonna see a video and then finally even subscribed because she had become such a part of this channel with the comments and I know I've looked for her comments everywhere else too well this week <laughs> A short little series of videos came up. 
and it was like magic. I can't remember when last my head was so stuck to a screen in total awe and just stunned that um, although she hasn't been doing it for long, I don't think, her work was so alive and full of life. It was just incredible. So I will try my best to put a link up to both of those channels here um, today at the end or down below. But um, hopefully she will comment again here today. And if you just click on her icon, that will take you to her channel. It is not to be missed. Watch them from the first one because um, it draws you into a world. Okay, we need to get some tools. Um, actually, I think um, the next part I do is to carve these down and give them some shape. And, okay, and, and some more form to, although I don't know that I've really looked close at a turtle, the paddle-like arms. And then when I do this too, I'm also always aware of making sure that, you know, if we've got a real small connection, that I leave extra clay in the back so that it doesn't break there and if I need to really show off that you know this is the end of his foot and the beginning of that one's body I will you know carve it so that um, okay carve it so that we you know leave the bulk of the bulk of him there and uh, just a bit of color showing there And let's see. And since I still have an old one, how did I do that? It's good to have something to look back on. I think um, it looks like maybe I do something like that when I come to, yeah, um, the end of one and the beginning of another. If I wasn't doing this now for the clip, I think I would have let this dry just a little bit first. Okay, and I am going to rush through this. Maybe next time we will do the fish. And I will show more of the carving process then. And the, this, uh, the title of this piece actually had a title. I, my work I divide up into garden pottery, meaning bird baths and planters. And then simple garden art, or no, what is what do I call this? Garden art, and then the more serious pieces, garden sculpture, and then I do pieces that are, yeah, contemporary, full-blown sculpture as well. So, yeah, one of these kind of tools. I don't know that that is the one I would use. But, um, so we give him a one of these, and then some of those, and this is, as I said, garden art. This isn't, um, you know, no, no big message, no highly thought out, uh, just nice simple garden art. But, um, yeah, it does have a title. It's, um, How Many Turtles on a Family Trip to Mexico with um, you've seen her here as the Pottery Apprentice, my niece, when she was very, very young, <laughs> a couple years old or something. Um, her mom and dad went out diving, and I had to babysit. Well, they had a turtle pen at the, and it wasn't a big resort, just a small hotel, dive hotel, um, where divers went. And she would go into the turtle pen and count how many turtles and go one, five, eight, nine, three. Okay, she was the age where you're learning how to count. Seven, nine, two. So how many turtles? Well, you can count the whole way round and see if you can figure it out, if you can keep track. Okay, let's take a look back at where some of this came from. The last workshop I did. Okay, here it is, the plant where they extrude the pipe, and look at that. Is that a happy potter or what? Oh, and this is on the uh, new side of the plant, where uh, the pieces were pretty much not touched by human hands. 
and I shouldn't say that because there's work involved in everything. But um, on the side of the, we worked on the old side of the plant where it did involve human hands, and these pieces were all grabbed off the press and lifted onto those pallets by somebody. And there the guys are. Uh, we worked up in a loft. They actually lifted them up to us. And okay, and now the artists. <laughs> Anxious to get the material, but how do you handle something big like that? Usually the ones we had, the pipe, were about head high and um, six or eight inches in diameter. Well, they didn't get the six or eight inch runs going. This was probably one of the only time in 20 years that I remember getting, I think that's 10 or that might be even 12 inch pipe. So it was a matter of cutting them off into bite-sized chunks that, um, yeah, everybody could handle. And, okay, the plant did do garden pottery for a short period of time. Actually, maybe a decade, more or less. And here's a group of artists. It was one of the greatest things about this was um, meeting artists from all over the country and many who came back year after year. The pieces the plant did, very architectural, as you can see here. And even when they got out of, um, you know, this little sideline for them, People still wanted it, so at the shipping receiving yard, when I was there last, you could still pick up just an extruded pipe, and this might be where they sold um, chimney pipe or whatever somebody wanted. But um, here are some carved pedestals with an ivy pattern and the bird baths. Uh, made with a ram press. Okay, if you've never seen what that is, that's something that uh, is not likely to be owned by a simple potter. But uh, something like this could be done in anybody's studio with a rolling pin and a piece of clay. Okay, stop back for another video. We will look at their kilns and some of the other artists. This is uh, Barb Kindler who I presented the workshops with many times. Sometimes she'd do them, sometimes I would, so often would get together. She's putting together a slideshow. And some of the other artists work we'll look at in the next video. Okay, this uh, horticultural looking one I believe did get a top yet. Very natural and we'll look at some of my pieces. Okay, sculpture. Okay, this year it was all fish. This was 2011 and it was after this that I turned back to making pots. So it's always good to have the rug pulled out from under you. It got me back to making pots when the uh, workshops came to an end and now when I've got a kiln down it's got me back to making some garden pottery. Okay, do stop back.